Սպարտական այս հզոր հաստատությունը կատարում է վիզաների ձևակերպում և առաջարկում է հարմարավեր շորջագայություն աշխարի ծանկա ծածողության։ Հավայի, Մեկսիկո, նավային շորջագայություն հանիմունի Հաստատության կենտրոնները գտնվում են գլենդելում, հոլիվուդում, նորդ հոլիվուդում, վեն նայսում և սակրամենտո կաղաքներում, յունիվերսլ թրավոլ ընտուրս, լավագույներից լավագույնը։Աշխարի հեղինակավոր բեմա հարթակներում լավագու են գնահատանքին արժանացած Հայաստանի պետական կամերային երկճախումբը Հոբերտ Մոքեյանի ղեկավարությամբ առաջին անգամ լոս անջելեսում առիթ է ընձերում բարցրաճաշակ � Հետերվարի երկուսին, երեկոյան ժամը 739-ին, բալենտինի որվա կապակցությամբ գլենդելի պրեսբիթերիան եկեղեցու շկեղ սրահում, կկայանա անկրկների երկի երեկո ռոմանսի իրական սիրահարների համար։ Երեկո ուր երկը կթևացի Կոմսերի համար զնգը հրեք, 8-1-2-5-0-5-0-5. Հելո ու մակմ տը լայց ան էլ այմ եր հոստ լույս գել, բիվոր այն ընտրդուս մայ ամեզին գեստ, I do want to remind everybody on February 2nd at 7.30 at the Glendale Presbyterian Church, uh, there will be an amazing concert on Valentine's Day with Anahit Narcissian and her friends. And on March 9th, the National Chamber Choir of Armenia will arrive in Los Angeles for a uh, spectacular uh, choir concert with many special guests, as well as our honorary guest, uh, the Minister of Culture, Armen Avapian. Amivian, sorry. This evening, um, we are going to be talking about um, April 4th uh, voting. A uh, gentleman who is I can't believe all these things that he's involved with. Uh, he's a candidate for the Glendale School Board District D, which we'll, we will explain in a little bit, Arts and Culture Commission, Chair of the Glendale Youth Alliance, uh, President of Glendale Parks and Open Space Foundation, Committee Member of the Armenian American Museum, and the most proudest moment, I'm sure, of his resume is that he is a new father. So welcome, congratulations. Thank you. I Thank wish you, you the best me. of luck on April 4th. And of course, the biggest honor is you being a dad. So I wish you the very best. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, it definitely fatherhood is exciting and it uh, pales in comparison for how important uh, it is. But uh, I'm very excited to be a father, very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, you're running for an amazing thing, which is the future of your child and other children um, of all districts. Um, before we get to the districts and why you're running and all that, give us a little background besides all the things that I said, a little background about you. Uh, sure. So I'm a lifelong resident. Uh, my parents uh, moved from Lebanon during the 70s to, and they eventually settled in Glendale. Uh, my wife is from Hayastan. She came here when she was about four or five. Uh, but I was very lucky to grow up in Glendale, uh, went to Glendale schools, uh, went to Columbus Elementary, Toll Middle School, Hoover High School. Uh, and when I was 14, I was very lucky uh, to be in a position where I started my own business. Uh, building at 14? At 14. I, I didn't want to wait too long. Amazing. Um, but uh, I had a lot of time, and uh, at the time, uh, websites were brand new, so I was learning technology, learning design and art. Uh, started a business in the technology and art uh, sector, and uh, that was actually what you know helped me introduced me to a lot of the community causes uh, as I was working with more and more nonprofit organizations. And it helped me find my passion pretty much. So uh, I was very lucky to have the business that I was doing very well, but also I, I got involved with a lot of nonprofit organizations. Uh, as you see, uh, it's very important, the community work to me. Why are you 
interested in being a candidate and why did you choose to be a candidate for the Glendale School Board? Well, over the summer, I actually had an opportunity to go to Armenia and I taught a uh, graphic design workshop at TUMO. And uh, for those of you who haven't been, TUMO is, the, is an absolutely incredible place. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think they like us using the term, but it's kind of like a Disneyland of education because um, the kids want to be there. They're excited to be there. Mm -hmm. um, they're enjoying their, the educational process and they're learning a lot of skills that they're going to be able to use for the rest of their lives. And then I came back home. And uh, you know, I'm, being a product of our school district, we're actually very lucky to have a very strong school district. Um, but what Tumo showed me was, you know, there are countries all around the world that are doing very innovative things in education. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do those things now, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now, what will that mean for the future of our kids? True. Uh, so thinking about my son, uh, thinking about the 26,000 students that go through our district every year, uh, makes you realize and growing. that. And growing, absolutely. And it makes you realize that uh, while our education may be great today, we, we have, have to, to start think thinking about, about the future, future and what needs to change today so that our kids are ready for that future. When we're talking about school board, I know that a few years ago it has been different where it used to be everybody got to vote for school districts. Now we have District D in various districts. How does that work? Uh, so this will be the first time in Glendale's you know, 100 plus year history that we're going to have districted elections. Uh, so essentially the city of Glendale has been split into five areas. Okay. Uh, my area is District D. Uh, it's also important to mention that city council will continue to be just uh, the way it has always been at large. The entire city will get to vote for city council. But when it comes to the Glendale Unified School District and when it comes to Glendale Community College, uh, those two will be by district, by trustee area. Now once elected, yeah. District D, if chosen, would you be able to participate in all districts? Do you have a voice in all or just particularly District D? Yes, and thank you. That's a really important point. So District D includes everything from Emerald Isle, Chevy Chase Canyon, Glen Oaks Canyon, uh, down to uh, Glendale High Area, all the way down to Adams Hill and South Glendale, and the border with Los Angeles. So those will be the voters and the residents that will be able to elect and select who represents them for Glendale Unified School District and uh, a similar district uh, that's a southern district for Glendale Community College. But once you are elected, uh, you are responsible for the entire district. Uh, and okay. while you will have certain schools that fall under your voting area, uh, you are responsible for all the 30 plus uh, Glendale public schools that we have. I was just gonna ask you, how many schools do we have in the city of Glendale that you will be impacted? Uh, it's 32 schools about, but we do have a, a number of other programs, uh, kindergarten programs and uh, early learning as well. The voting will be on April the 4th. So ballots will be coming out on March 6th. I believe, right? Yes. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yep. So we are, uh, the uh, uh, filing period will end uh, January 26th. That's when you'll know who all the candidates are that are running for the seats. And from there, it moves very quickly because March 6th, about a month later, um, ballots will start going home. And, and many of our residents and our community members do vote by mail. And so right. between March 6th to April 4th, there will be uh, voting by mail period. And I, there may be also early voting. But April 4th is election day. And if you haven't turned in your vote by mail ballot by then, you can also drop it off at your local polling location. Perfect. Why, what kind of problems does Glendale School have right now, the Unified School District? What kind of problems do we face right now? I think probably the overarching... Or challenges, should sure. I say. Yeah, absolutely. The, I think one of the overarching challenges, which is a little bit out of our control, but our public schools are unfortunately not funded uh, as much as uh, they should be. Um, that's something that comes from the state leadership. Right. Um, but with the funds that we do have, I think the biggest challenge is not so much the individual issues, and of course every school district has its individual issues, but more so just having that vision for the future. You know, what do we need to be teaching our kids today so that they're ready um, for their future careers? Um, so when it comes to things like, you know, having the, enough technology into the classroom, um, teaching the skills that the kids are going to need to go on after, after school, uh, after they graduate from uh, public education, also, um, for example, we, we believe that, or I believe that, um, financial literacy is very important. It's something that our, teach, our schools don't teach, unfortunately, right now. And whether you're going on to college, whether you're going on to a career right after graduating high school, th those are some of the important fundamental things you need important. to have a successful, stable life. And I think our public schools are responsible for that. So that's one program that I would advocate for that I think should be happening in our um, K through 12 system. And you got me to the next uh, question of what would you do once elected? What is your goal? So uh, my business and community background, um, I think I've, I've been lucky to work with a lot of great people and, and you know, see some of the things that our community needs. And you know, when you're serving 26,000 students, the public schools have access 
an opportunity to really impact lives. So I think first we need to innovate our schools. Uh, we need to uh, bring in the state-of-the-art technology that our teachers need to educate our kids for the future jobs that are going to be out there. Uh, I think STEAM education is very important. So that's focusing on science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. Right. Uh, more and more studies are coming out that are saying, you know, the jobs of the future are going to require these skills. And even if your kid plays with an iPhone at home, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be able to apply that to a job and a career in the future. So we have to be teaching those skills at an early age. Um, I think we need to uh, enrich our educational programs. Um, we have a great program called Dual Language Immersion. So many of our kids get to learn Armenian and English together while they're learning their subjects in elementary school. Those programs should serve more students. Uh, and we have a lot of different languages, Japanese, Korean, um, Spanish. Uh, and it's a great opportunity because, you know, you're getting um, what often would be only available in a private school in our public schools in Glendale. Um, we also need to, as I said, financial literacy I think is very important. And also supporting our students' uh, needs. So uh, we need to be um, uh, educating our special needs students with compassion. Uh, we need to do a better job of supporting our at-risk youth. And, you know, one of the topics that always comes up, and I think it's time that our district takes action on it, is mental health. And I think we need a comprehensive mental health plan that covers the entire district. So that means students, teachers, staff, uh, the families that are with the students, um, everything from you know bullying sure. to uh, cyberbullying to um, just uh, you know getting our kids to be um, serving our whole student. That's that's the best way I would describe it. Uh, not just academically, but also you know socially, mentally, uh, overall wellness. Absolutely. And as far as once elected and. You know, we always hope for you being the one that will be elected. Um, and I know that you have a lot of endorsements behind you and a true worthy because your resume as 14 years old to start having your own business and, and thinking of that, you're a true inspiration to a lot of young people. And that's truly amazing and remarkable at the same time and commendable. Let's talk a little bit about your endorsements. Uh, sure, we're very, very proud of our endorsements because I think um, uh, it's a statement, of course, about um, a lot of the things you mentioned, uh, putting in the community work um, prior to running for office, um, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, so State Senator Anthony Portentino has endorsed our campaign. Um, all five college board members, uh, which is uh, very important, you know, coming from our some of our education leaders in the community. Um, we also have uh, the endorsement of City Council Member Zara Sinanian. Uh, and an endorsement that was very important to me personally, uh, our, our school board member, uh, Christine Walters. Okay. Uh, she's an uh, eight-year um, eight uh, serving, mm -hmm. uh, serving our, our district for eight years, past president. Uh, I actually had an opportunity to meet her uh, seven years ago or so uh, doing a leadership Glendale program. And uh, who would have known that I would be running for Glendale School Board seven years later? Um, but uh, her endorsement is very important because she's the outgoing board member. So she is hopefully the board member that I would be succeeding and uh, it means yes. a great deal for her to endorse as uh, having the confidence that I will do as good of a job as she's done for the last eight years. Well, I'm sure you will. Uh, we also do have to mention that uh, Rej Aranjanyan is running for Glendale City Council. So I believe on April 4th, it will also be Glendale City Council um, elections. So I do want to do mention that also that we do have an amazing two gentlemen that are truly remarkable and need our help. What could the community do to put out your word? Because at the end of the day, it is fundraising, which is very important. Sure. Very important. But at the end of the day, it's how many people vote for you. What could we do to help you succeed in having that seat? Well, the number one thing I would say, and I think uh, it's a challenge that we constantly face. Unfortunately, a very small percentage of residents make the decision for the majority of who should represent them. So the number one thing I would say is if you're not registered to vote, register to vote. Uh, if you are registered to vote and you vote actively, you know, thank you and it's very important that we take advantage of this uh, special opportunity that we have to choose who our leaders are. But I would say get active and tell your neighbors, uh, knock on doors. Um, anytime you're at a family gathering, talk about the election, bring it up. Um, because uh, again, you know, our, our powers are for our voices in our vote. And uh, April 4th will be an opportunity where you choose, you know, local leaders that are going to have a direct impact on your life. City council members, you know, will have a direct impact on your life. Your Glendale school board members will. Glendale Community College will. Uh, one of the things that we always um, are very proud of is how safe Glendale is. 
And of course, uh, uh, real estate prices, of course, are very good as well. And all these things uh, come from, um, you know, what our um, institutions and our leaderships are doing so that we, we build a safe community, we build a community full of um, uh, uh, good people who have, who have gone to school, who have stayed out of trouble, who have, um, you know, been, uh, been able to find opportunities after graduating from high school. So uh, these are all very important and they affect each other. So the, the most important thing is just get active and um, spread the word about voting. And of course, with districting coming up as well, it's a big change for the city of Glendale. Um, so I think we were talking about earlier that uh, there will be about 13 different ballots. So depending on where you live and where you vote, um, you will be voting on um, all of city council uh, candidates, right. um, but you will be voting on one specific You'll have one specific vote for Glendale School Board and one vote for Glendale College Could Board. Could you repeat the District D compo uh, composes of what areas again? Sure. Um, for the most part, it's uh, zip codes 91205 and 91206. That's probably the easiest way to remember it. Okay. Um, but uh, you can go on our website, votechant.com, and there you'll be able to search on a map and find exactly where, you, where you'll be voting and who you'll be able to vote for, uh, what districts you're a part of. Um, but uh, it's everything from Emerald Isle, Chevy Chase Canyon, Glen Oaks Canyon, all the way in the north, down through Glendale High area in central Glendale, all the way down to south Glendale and Adams Hill. Uh, for the most part, it's everything right. east of Glendale Avenue and everything east of Chevy Chase. Okay. And for those young children that are watching or that will be watching our show, um, what kind of advice would you be able to give our young children that have admirations one day to become at 14 or in the future to be an elected position like you are? I would, I would say get, it's never too young to get involved. Uh, that's the number one thing I've probably learned over the course of my life. And a lot of these things just happen very naturally. Um, I happen to be interested in a subject, you know, computer and technology, where you just needed a laptop and, and uh, enough uh, passion and, and will to teach yourself some skills and, and be able to go off and do great things. Um, and, you know, adults are very welcoming. That's what I've learned. Um, they've given me uh, many opportunities from a very young age, and I can't imagine my life without community service. So I would definitely recommend uh, any opportunity you have to give back. Um, I think many people in our community, just like me, uh, you know, they're uh, born to immigrant parents. Mm -hmm. So I watch my parents struggle and, and just do everything they can to put food on the table and uh, get us through they've school. They've given and us a great opportunity. Absolutely. And, and for me, it's, in, it's important to give back because I'm in this position, not only because of my parents, but my school district that gave me my education. Right. Uh, I went to Glendale Community College as well before going to CSUN UCLA. So um, these are the institutions that, that made me who I am today in addition to my family, my parents, my friends. So I think it's very important to just get involved at a young age, find ways to give back. Uh, there are many, many organizations, nonprofit organizations in our community that would welcome sure. you with open arms. As far as the areas that you are going to be, um, the ones that are going to be voting on that day, um, they could do absentee ballots. Their ballots will go out on March 6th. I just want to repeat yep. in a sense. And the voting will be actually conducted on April the 4th. Um, so the results will be on April 4th. Um, I lost my train of thought right now. <laughs> What inspired you, aside from being a new dad, did that have any role in you wanting to become a candidate for Glendale School Board? It, it definitely did. Um, I mean, if you I, didn't I have a that. child, did you have that in your mind that you wanted to do this, or is it impacted more because you had? Well, I've been, I've been very involved with the school district because of uh, programs like Glendale Kiwanis, uh, where I served as past president uh, last year. And Kiwanis does a lot of programs at our schools. So we go into Marshall, Glen Oaks Elementary, Cerritos, and a lot of the elementary schools in Glendale. And uh, we're able to, uh, we've done bike uh, helmet giveaways and, and uh, talk kids about just safety overall, how to cross the road and that sort of thing. We've also done Reading is Fundamental where we uh, read to the elementary school students. We give them books. For many of them, it's their first book that they own. Uh, in some of our, our uh, lower income communities. Right. And you know, you see the, with very small gestures, very small amount of time, how much of a difference you make in their lives. And you know, we, my wife and I made the decision uh, to run, for, you know, to go for this seat and go for the office prior to having our child. So she was pregnant. Uh, she was in Armenia with me, by the way, six months Aww. pregnant. Uh, and we, we still went everywhere. Went was to that Arkansas your first as time well. in Armenia? That was my first time, yeah. How did you feel? It was amazing. It was amazing. I regret not going sooner, really? honestly. Yeah. 
Um, but it was an amazing, I mean, being at Tumo was amazing. We went to Artsakh as well. We saw the Tumo in Stepanakert. Uh, it was an amazing experience. And the whole time the little guy was, you know, in her belly uh, going mm. along with us. And uh, I think now with, you know, being a father and, you know, you look at him and you realize, you know, there's 26,000 of you, 26,000 of you at, at our school district. And you realize, I think, how tangible things become and uh, how important you realize that the work, you know, you're doing is. Uh, when you can look at him and realize, you know, there's a lot more of, you And it know. goes by very fast. Absolutely. How many Armenian students do we have in the Armenia, in the Glendale Unified School District, would you know? Uh, it's probably hovers somewhere around 10,000, 10 to, 10 to 13,000. It's 26,000 students, and it's probably roughly half of the school district uh, are Armenian kids. And how Glendale is growing so much with all the new buildings and the constructions and the apartments, uh, I'm sure that will grow much more. Yep. Is, will there be enough space for all these children to be able to go to these schools? Or yep. do they plan on building another school? Well, the, currently the, uh, a lot of the, the development has actually happened, which will impact Columbus Elementary School the most, which is actually the elementary school I graduated from. And so that school has gone under a lot of uh, remodeling and expanding as well. Um, but that's probably the number one school that's affected. And then down the line, when they go to uh, middle school and high school, those schools will have to be looked at as well. But the district did do a study to see uh, what that would mean for the numbers, because it is a lot of new residents coming to one area. Where <laughs> it's, say, it's a very How many is there for one class? How many students are in one class? Did it fluctuates. Know? And actually, one of the challenges as well is keeping classroom sizes down. And one of the things that happens is that our dual immersion language programs actually have very low number of students in that class so that they can um, you know, have the proper experience learning two languages and the subject matter in that language. So one of the challenges, it, makes, it puts pressure on the other classes to get larger so that the average is right. maintained. So that's actually, that's actually definitely an important issue that's ongoing. You, you know, we have to maintain small classrooms so that uh, it's easier for the teacher to you know, serve the students properly, but it's also easier for the students to get that personal attention. Well, I know my daughter was going to a public school and it was about 32 kids to one teacher. And now she is a class of 14. So it was a huge difference. That's a big difference, yeah. It's a huge difference. And I think it makes a huge difference on the child and the teacher, of course. Absolutely. If you think about it, I mean, what's the best way to educate a child? If, you, we, could, if we can have a scenario where we have one teacher and one student, uh, that student would be, I mean, they'd, the teacher they'd go would be miles great. Away. Oh, yeah, the teacher <laughs> would be very happy as well. Um, so, you know, of course, that's not manageable, but we, we definitely need to watch that number to make sure that it doesn't grow too big. I've been in college classrooms with, 150 plus students, and that teacher never knew my name. So um, we have to make sure that we keep the number small enough that you know the students are served properly. Do you have anything to say to our viewers before we end the show? Um, I would just say uh, I would love to have your support and your vote. Um, very proud to be a lifelong resident of Glendale, a product of our Glendale schools, and um, I hope to bring a fresh vision to our Glendale Unified School District and have an opportunity to serve the next generation of students. Uh, if you would like any help with your ballot, if you would like to know where you're going to vote, uh, you can always visit votechant.com, which has a lot of information. And you can also call our campaign team, 818-696-0280. And uh, again, uh, election's April 4th. And if you vote by mail, you'll be receiving your ballot the week of March 6th. Like I said, I wish you the best of luck. 2017, I'm sure, will be a great year. And... I do want to mention, sorry, um, on Valentine's Day, we would love to have every one of you to come and uh, support our wonderful Anna hitner Susian, who is an amazing singer, uh, on February 2nd, Thursday, 7.30, at the Glendale Presbyterian Church. And at the same time, on March 9th, we have the National Chamber Choir of Armenia, who will be arriving on the seventh shunt and will be having an amazing, amazing uh, performance Great. with um, the sponsor is going to be Vancha and Tamar Manukian, as well as um, Sasun Nalbanian, uh, Bovardia Banquet Hall. So we would like to thank the sponsors and I would like to welcome all of you on March 9th. Uh, at the Glendale Presbyterian Church at 7.30. You could buy tickets for both at 818-265-0506, ticketmicket.com. Again, on April 4th, remember to vote for Shant Sahakian um, for Glendale School Board District D, which will impact, once he gets elected, the whole school board. Absolutely. Am I right? Yes. Watch for your ballots on March 6th, and please don't forget, voting is 
a, a privilege, it's an honor. It is the most important thing that when people have taken um, the swearing and uh, that right was given to them that we could use that right to basically use it in a great way and use our voice to be heard. And that's the best way when we elect people like Shant that has known Glendale, has gone to the schools, um, so he's a product of Glendale, and what better yet to elect Shant Sahakian on April 4th. Thank you very much, Shant. Thank you for having Wish me. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you for watching Lights on LA, and have a very nice evening, and good night. Աշխարի հեղինակավոր բեմահարթակներում լավագու են գնահատանքին աժանացած Հայաստանի պետական կամերային եկչախումբը Հոբերտ Մոքեյանի ղեկավարությամբ առաջին անգամ լոս անջելեսում առիթ է ընձերում բարցրաճաշակ երաժշտասերին վայելելու խմբերքային բազմավոճ երաժշտություն։ Մարտի 9-ին, 19-ին, Պրեզբիթերիան եկեղեցում։ Հետերվարի երկուսին, երեկոյան ժամը 7-ին, Վալենտինի օրվա կապակցությամբ գլենդելի պրեսբիթերիան եկեղեցու շկեղ սրահում կկայնա ընկրկների երկի երեկո ռոմանսի իրական սիրահարների համար։ Երեկո ուր երկը կթվացի սիրո Հոմսերի համար զնգը հրեք 8-1-8-2-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-